Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have just a few points I would like to make at the outset. Uh, the first one is to uh, emphasize that ICANN is uh, a multi-stakeholder structure, which was born that way, and it has developed uh, increasing mechanisms for involving interested stakeholders in policy making with regard to the domain name system and to internet address uh, assignment. Uh, I think that one of the most important components of ICANN is the Governmental Advisory Committee, and it's very important to all of us that we see increased participation in that group in order to assure that public policy issues are adequately addressed. Uh, by the same token, uh, just recently ICANN has managed to complete the implementation of its at-large advisory committee, uh, replacing the interim committee and creating a number of regional at-large organizations in order to inform discussion on public policy coming from the civil uh, society. Uh, I'd like to make the first um, point about infrastructure by, and uh, critical resources <clears throat> by pointing out that almost any resource which is important to implementing the internet becomes critical at one time or another. For example, having electric power available can become a very critical resource. Having a technical workforce that is available to help you build and operate pieces of internet. Uh, having a uh, highly open standards making process is a critical resource. So in the course of the discussion in this panel, I hope we don't lose track of the breadth of the uh, resources that are needed in order to successfully implement and operate this global internet. The second point I'd like to make is that with regard to domain names, there has been substantial progress in the last 12 months in the expansion of the domain name space towards non-Latin character sets, non-Latin scripts. There is today a test underway with 11 scripts that are not using uh, Latin characters in order to evaluate the effect of those kinds of top-level domains uh, on the various applications, the browsers, uh, the email applications, and the like that might encounter such domain names. Their intention is to uh, reach the point where uh, ICANN can invite uh, proposals for top-level domains in these new character sets somewhere around the middle of 2008. And this uh, objective is for both the country code TLDs and also for the generic ones. Um, the second observation I'd like to make with regard to IP address space is the repeated uh, warning that uh, IP version 4 addresses will eventually be exhausted. This doesn't mean that the internet stops working. It just means that we won't have any more of that address space to hand out. ICANN's blocks, which are allocated to the regional internet registries, will probably be exhausted somewhere around the middle of 2010. This uh, simply emphasizes the importance of introducing a concurrent operation of IP version 6 with a much, much larger address space. There is plenty of IPv6 address space available, but it is not enough simply to have an address. The IPv6 addresses are meaningless unless they show up in a routing table somewhere. And the inability to reach everywhere in the internet with the new address space is a serious barrier. When the internet was first implemented and as it grew, every time you connected to a particular network, you could reach all of the other networks on the internet using the IP version 4 address space. But in today's terms, IPv6 is not uniformly implemented. When you uh, implement v6, unless you connect to another IPv6 network, you may actually be an, uh, an island of IPv6 operation. And while there are mechanisms such as tunneling through the IPv4 connected network, I would like to suggest the importance of um, adopting policies that will encourage IPv6 connectivity among all of the internet service providers. Governments could choose to subsidize the cost of inter exchange points that would encourage interconnection using IPv6 address space so as to reach as quickly as possible a fully connected IPv6 system in parallel with the IPv4 system. Uh, finally, the last point I'd like to make is that capacity building is one of the Millennium Development Goals. 
And in my view, nothing can be more important than, than to build additional capacity so that we can reach the other five and a half billion people in the world who do not yet have access to the internet. And that is really the biggest focus of attention that I can think of right now, establishing policies that will in fact encourage the implementation and spread of access to the internet and its use. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. That's my opening remark. Nominet manages .uk, which currently means we manage 6.4 million names. According to my taxi driver the other day, that's the equivalent of the population of Rio. I'm not sure if that's correct, but it's a rather large number of people. So we run a large registry, but actually we're a very small part of the global critical internet resource, which actually is defined as quite a large area, and in turn, that is just one part of the global internet. I've been with Nominet for eight years now, which is a small time compared to other people on the panel, but I've seen huge growth and change. I've seen evolution, not revolution. I've seen registrations grow from 3,000 a month to 6,000 a day. I've seen the number of registrars grow from 100 to over 3,000. And as an organization, we've invested millions of pounds in our systems and infrastructure to cope with growth and to provide resilience and reliability to all of our customers. As a not-for-profit, in the time that we've been in existence, we've been able to reduce our prices from the grand sum of £100 to £5 currently. As a result of all of this, UK citizens can get online quickly and cheaply, and this small part of critical internet resources works well for them. I've also seen a continued development of the UK multi-stakeholder approach. My sector in the UK hasn't really got any legislation or regulation. We work on the basis of industry self-regulation, which means we work in partnership with all stakeholders and also with our government. I've also seen an evolution of ICANN during my time, and in particular, Nominet's relationship with ICANN. In the years since Tunis, we've exchanged letters with ICANN that describe and recognize our positions. We've also joined the Country Code Supporting Organization, where we learn from other country code managers and share experiences and policies from our country. We also develop global policy where it's necessary to be a global policy, for example, in the internationalized domain name space. I've seen some positive evolution as well of the service that IANA provides, although of course IANA will know that I prefer it much faster going forward. There's more to be done. There's more to be done in terms of participation, and we're committed to helping improve participation in both ICANN and regional organizations going forward. There's also more to be done on improving ICANN's accountability, particularly as it moves towards greater independence in the future. So to conclude, critical internet resources actually isn't a hot topic in the UK, particularly for users. When we discuss it at Nominet, which of course we do from time to time, the key issues that really matter to us are about enhanced cooperation and evolution. We see no need for new structures. The key issues that really matter to UK users are around security and access to the future global success of the internet.